Generally, hand and hard, we were blown away by the flavour and the texture. There's some that was so old in, in the concept of being frozen. Um, it's, for us, we literally just like to grind it, walk bath it, and like to grow so just so it didn't overcook the fish too much. But when we when we ate it, the, the almost the, the lines, the fillets just just the just came yeah. away so easy. Um, that was just like when you take a frozen fish, it tends to be mushy. So the concept and the ingredient is like amazing. So uh, some that we were 
very, very surprised about and, and almost opens your mind up a little bit to think about how we work as a business, like you say, when it comes to our cost, consistency, uh, availability from this. So something that you know, we're going to look at a lot more and I suggest, like I say, try to sell this. It's really good. And the flavour was amazing. So, much, so. Um, so the next course we want to do is um, a scarlet dish. Uh, we're going to serve it with a uh, belly pork from New Deal. Um, I'm sure Neil will tell you about the pork as it goes around. Um, the pork we brine uh, for 12 hours and then we vap up in its own fat and steam it overnight at 80 degrees and then we press it so it just cooks in its own fat. Uh, then we lightly just trim it up, cook it on the planchard, brush it with pork fat all the time. So that pork just absorbs all that fat, so it's really... We, we like to call it dirty food by eating it, and just juices just come in your mouth. Uh, and we serve it with uh, sweet corn, which is in season now, which we like to barbecue. Um, we make a sweet corn puree, um, uh, a light lemon gel, just for the acidity. And we serve it with um, sweet corn shoots and... Is it Zori Crest, you pronounce it? It's almost like a... It's like a nasturgeon like leaf. Yes. But it's, it's, it's got a lot more happiness to it, a lot more heat. But it works really well with the fact that the more sweet as scallop and the sweet corn, it just cuts it really nice. And it, we, we don't use it as, as a garnish, we use it as almost like a seasoning. That little heat that comes through without having put pepper in the dish, I'm not a big fan of pepper, but the, the leaf allows you to have that season on it, which works really well. And we just top the, um, the pork with a bit of, sorry, the scallop with a bit of lardo as well. So that fat just drapes over the, the scallop again, so quite rich. The, the, even though they're from Goosnod, the village, and they're reared by the same process they've done, but they're not grown on the farm. Um, but still, the same process uh, is added to it, and it's still an amazing product. Um, the ducks, we, we get them salt aged, uh, three or four days salt aged, I believe. I think that for me is probably enough. I think if you're going to salt aged duck longer, you're going to draw too much moisture and you're going to lose that juice, juiciness of the duck. Um, the duck would just literally slowly walk back cooked in a plancha, finished with miso and fennel pollen, so it's got a lovely fragrance that sort of cuts that light gameness of the duck. And we're going to serve it with uh, caramelised cauliflower, uh, apricot and black garlic, and we're also going to serve it with buttered cauliflower leaves. If anyone ever thinks of the cauliflower where we normally get them in as a head and they cut all them leaves off just to get that lovely white centre, and chuck that in the bin, don't taste it, it's amazing. In salads, and when you lightly butter it, and then it'll be able to put a water motion. It's amazing. So we're going to serve that on top of the duck as well uh, to show you some of that, that we use that we don't want to throw things away. Uh, and on the side of the duck, on the separate dish, we're going to have a duck ragout top. So the legs have been braised down. Uh, it's going to be topped with foie gras, uh, potato cooked in duck fat, and topped with some um, black garlic, apricot, and some flowers. And the pastry itself has also got duck fat in it as well. So just trying to get a lovely duck as much as we can into that dish as possible. So, a nice light dish, um, using stuff that's sort of in season now. Uh, but same again, you eat rising uh, an amazing product such as uh, the ducks that we get from, from UDL. And we use UDL for all our meats, um, everything from our lamb to our pork, to our duck, to our beef. Because uh, everything we come in just consistent. Um, at the right price that we need to be in order to make the same again for the business, but without uh, jeopardising the quality of it. You know. So if you haven't used UDL, try them out. Um, we've been using them for since we since the day one we've opened up. So I hope you enjoy the next course um, and I'll pop off with this one. Thank you very much.
as you can see, there's no one else in here today apart from uh, you guys from the Stark Kent team. Uh, so I just want to say a massive round of applause to Kenny, Laura, and all the team here at the House of, House of Tigers. Tides for the networking lunch. Uh, tune into the staff canteen, you can watch the video. Thanks very much. How are you there? You alright? Kenny Atkinson here from House of Tides. I hope you're all well. Um, hope you had a lovely lunch. Yeah, and uh, I hope you see you at House of Tides soon. Please like and subscribe and comment down below.